put together a quick little video here to go over how to set up the overlay component for Perlink tools. Um, so the overlay component is basically a uh, OBS, um, or well, it's an HTML page that you can use with OBS to display real time now playing information and uh, kind of uh, track history for live streams uh, when you're using Pioneer equipment. Um, so the first thing that we want to talk about here is kind of the uh, setup that you have to have and some of the limitations of the software. Um, so uh, the first thing that you have to be aware of is that the CDJs need to be networked on the same network as the computer. So that means that um, the Ethernet cables coming out of the CDJs should be plugged into, for example, your home router. Uh, that way the computer that you're running the software on will also be able to talk to the CDJs. Um, the DJM that you're using will also need to be networked. Um, you can tell that it's working and networked by the red ring that you have on your CDJ's platter when they're on air. So that is when the fader is up for them, um, the cross fader is on the right channel, uh, the CDJ will have a red ring indicating that it is um, like on air and you can hear it. Uh, the software needs that to understand what track is playing and what track is not playing. Um, a limitation of software is that only three CDJs may be in use. So the software actually will emulate itself as a CDJ and will act as one of the CDJs that is not on your network. Um, so if you have four CDJs on the network, you actually won't be able to use this, or at least you won't be able to use one of your CDJs um, when live streaming, um, just because uh, the way that Pioneer wrote their software actually only allows for four uh, devices on the network. And again, the uh, Perlink overlay will act as a device on the network. Um, finally, um, you actually won't be able to use Rekordbox on the computer that is running the uh, Perlink tool software. Um, so you can actually run, if you want, um, either Rekordbox on a different computer or um, obviously just run the Perlink tools on a separate computer. Um, I've seen people use um, Raspberry Pis to run the Perlink server software. Um, and that kind of just works and then you can still use record box. <clears throat> okay, um, with that being said, with kind of those uh, limitations and setup requirements kind of out of the way, let's go ahead and kind of just jump right into getting this going. So if you go ahead and jump over to the Perlink Tools webpage here, head to the releases page <clears throat> and you'll want to download both the Perlink overlay.html and the Perlink server for whatever operating system you're using. Um, in this tutorial, I'll be using Mac OS. Um, for Linux, it's going to be pretty much more or less the same. For Windows, it'll be a little bit different just because you'll have to use PowerShell and, and or the command line to run these programs. Um, I might end up making a little video tutorial for Windows, um, but let's go ahead and download the Mac one. <clears throat> Once you've got those downloaded, go ahead and open up your terminal and head into your downloads directory. Um, so you'll want to give um, executable permission to the Prolink server. So chmod plus x Prolink server. And then you'll want to execute that. Um, before you run it, make sure that your CDJs are on. Um, if they're not, then the software won't be able to determine what uh, player ID it should um, take. So once they're on, go ahead and execute that. Hopefully you'll see something like this where it detects the uh, CDJs and the mixer on the network um, and it's assigned itself a virtual CDJ ID. Um, if you don't, make sure that again, that the CDJs are all on the same network. Um, it's possible that the interface might have been detected wrong, which you can manually configure if you look at the uh, um, server's documentation. Um, other than that, hopefully it works. If it doesn't, um, maybe open a GitHub issue. <laughs> okay, um, so once you have that running, go ahead and head back over to Finder, open up the Perlink overlay.html. So when you first load this, you'll be greeted with a white page. The thing that you'll wanna do is type in pound or hashtag if you're trendy um, and type in localhost port 8000. Hit enter. Um, you might also need to refresh um, but once you do that, you should be set to actually load in a track and hit play. So if I go to my CDJ right now and hit play on the track, 
you'll see that it kind of pops in there. If I go ahead and load another track and hit play on that, you'll see that the new track loads in, takes the place of the previous playing track, and now the last track is kind of in the little history section here. Okay, so once you've got this working, go ahead and take this URL here, um, copy it, and go ahead and run over to OBS. Um, so in OBS, what you'll want to do is you want to go add, and then you want to add a browser. If you don't have this OBS plugin installed, you can grab it here, um, which is called Open, or well, OBS Browser Plugin. Um, you can just Google that, uh, download and install it. Um, I won't go over here how to install uh, plugins for OBS, but I think there's documentation all over the place for that. Um, anyway, go ahead and do that. Um, I already have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that to get to that same configuration page. And what you're gonna wanna do is basically paste that URL that you took earlier right into here. Um, hopefully when you do that, you'll end up with something that looks like this. If you hit okay, uh, you should see that right here. Um, you'll wanna configure your width and height to either the same width and height as your OBS canvas um, or smaller or larger and then scale it up or down depending on what you want the overlay to look like. Uh, I kind of designed the overlay to work well with 1920 by 1080. Um, so that'd be ideal. Um, once you have that going, then you're pretty much set. Uh, it will uh, nicely display what tracks you're playing. Um, the way that it works is that it will wait a configured number of beats actually once you start playing the track before it shows up. So the default is that it will wait 128 beats. Um, which would be two phrases, assuming that you have 64 beats in one phrase, uh, which would be 16 bars. Um, and then it will show the track as playing as long as that CDJ is on air. Um, it will also switch over to the track if the CDJ is on air and the other track stops. So for example, if you cue it or if you cut the track out and that other CDJ is no longer on air, then after a uh, brief period of time, it will detect like, hey, the other track stopped. This is the not playing one. So generally it won't just show what track you're playing immediately after you load it and hit play or actually wait till the track is more or less considered to be kind of playing. Um, it's not super smart. It's not gonna know when you switch the baseline over or anything like that, but it gets pretty close. Cool. Um, so hopefully that kind of works. Uh, if you run into trouble, um, your best bet probably right now would be to open an issue on GitHub or just send me an email. Uh, again, this software is very, very kind of beta, maybe even alpha, um, but I'm continuing to work on it as much as I can uh, to improve the user interface, improve the user experience of using it. Um, I'm planning to add a little configuration um, application that you can use to actually start the server without having to do anything in the terminal and hopefully that will make it a lot easier for people to kind of just get up and running and use it without having to do anything. Cool, hopefully that helps. Um, thanks so much guys. Uh, hopefully you like the, the overlay. Hopefully it makes your streams more fun, gets your audience a little bit more involved and kind of stops those, hey, what track are you playing questions. Anyway, thanks guys.